Hey, what's up, y'all? This is JJ Harris, AKA Tech Boogie, and I'm a filmmaker and photographer based out of Oakland, California. I've been flying drones for a couple years now, and over this time, I've developed my own techniques for what I like to do to edit my photos to get them to pop and get them ready to post online and even to print. So I have a couple examples, one more basic and then one a little bit more advanced that I'll show you. Let's jump on in. So I've already preloaded these images into Lightroom. Lightroom is my editing program of choice. I've been using that for over five or 10 years now, but the same techniques that I'm using in Lightroom, you can also use in any semi-professional photo editing program on the computer or on the phone. So just a heads up. Let's take a look at the first image. So this is going to be a beach shot that I took uh, in Bali. This is the finish shot that we're gonna be aiming for here. And here's actually the original. I will say that I always set my drone to raw because you maintain the, the most quality, the most uh, detail in your photos when you shoot it raw. And also you have more flexibility as far as changing your white balance later on because it's not baked into the image. So first we have our basic section over here on the right, off top, I'm gonna just blast this contrast. So let's pump this up. That's gonna really start, you know, making the darker sections darker, darker and the brighter sections brighter. So we wanna pump that up and let's bring down the highlights to start to bring in back the color into the sand and the details. So let's, yeah, drop that pretty far down over here. Let's bring down the shadows a bit, okay. And now let's, yeah, get the color back. So vibrance and saturation is where we wanna do that. So let's turn up the vibrance. Yeah, as you see, you can see the color in the, in, the, in the water is really coming out here. And the saturation, let's play around with that. For my taste, it's actually a little too much color in the water, but it's not enough color in the sand. So I'm gonna show you guys how to edit those separately. Uh, but for now, let's bring in down a little bit. So let's actually bring down a little bit more um, in the shadows using the tone curve. Okay, bring up the color of the sand, make a small S curve here to add a little bit more dynamics to the image. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you how I like to edit the sand and the water separately. So let's go ahead here and hit graduated filter here at the top. This is super cool, super clutch feature that you definitely wanna learn if you wanna learn how to make your drone images pop. So here you wanna hit show selected mask overlay down here at the bottom. And now what we're gonna do, click in the middle of the image, around right here just above where the water is cause we're gonna edit the sand first and then click and drag down about right there. So what this is gonna show you now is that what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit only what you see in the red section here. So you can move this around how you like it, but right now we have it set up so that only the sand is gonna be uh, affected by the edits that we do. So that looks good to me. So hit uncheck show selected mask overlay. And now we have control of just editing the sand. So what I like to do is to bring the saturation up, you can lower the exposure a little bit here. So let's lower the exposure and then set the temperature. Let's warm it up. So let's warm up that sand. Yeah, boom. That's looking really good so far here. And now what I like to do, maybe bring up the saturation just a little bit, just a little bitty touch to match the water so it's a more even tone. Okay, boom. And then I actually like to lower the clarity or texture on sand because it makes it have a more dreamy kind of feel. So let's drop down the texture on here just to add a little bit of a haze, a little bit of a hazy look to it, a little dreamy feel to it. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I actually might drop this exposure down a little bit more then bring up the saturation. Yeah, just get it dialed in here. Okay, boom. 
And now let's actually make another graduated filter only for the water. So we want to hit new, boom. And you're going to click down on the bottom this time about midway and then drag up and then hit show selected overlay. And now it's only going to select the water. So that's good to go here. Uncheck that. And now what I want to do with the water, I feel like it's a little overexposed, like it's a little too hot for my taste. So what I'm going to do is just bring the saturation down just a little bit. All right. It's a little too far. Let's bring it up about right there. All right. Let's add a little bit more contrast over here to the to the water just so you can see the details underneath the underneath the surface. And I'm going to bring up the clarity in the water a little bit because I want to have basically with drone images, you want to bring out the contrast. And if you can contrast texture, you can contrast colors, light that really brings your images to life here. So let's bring up the clarity that just brings up subtle differences in the, in the water. OK, hit done. Yo, and that looks pretty good to me. All right, cool. Let's uh, jump over here to the next image now. As you can see, this image has very bright highlights here at the top, and then it's pretty dark down below, which is going to be normal with drone images, especially if you're going to have the horizon and the sky in your shot. So let's show you the process that I use to turn this image into this, which is a huge difference. So here we go, OK? All right, so first of all, I've shot it so the shadows were dark, but still there. And then if you look in the histogram, the highlights aren't blown out completely, but I maintain the detail in my highlights so I can bring them back in the edit. So let's drop these highlights down so they're more closer to the middle so you can start to see them and see the colors come out. Okay, yeah, you see those clouds like picking up over here? dope that's what we want to see now i'm going to bring up the exposure overall of the image to make to bring up the shadows just a little bit okay like that and let's bring up the shadows even more because i feel like it's too dark in there you don't really see any of the details okay boom you're trying to bring the sky and the shadows closer together here. So that's what we're doing, bringing up the shadows and bringing down the highlights till it's a more even tone. Now what we want to do, blast that contrast so we can actually see the image come to life. So let's bring this up here. Okay, all right, yeah, looking pretty good. So far, I think you can bring up the shadows just a little bit more. Bring up the contrast a little bit more, okay. It's looking pretty good so far. Now I'm going to go down to the tone curve and adjust this even a little bit further. So what we can do is we can bump these shadows up just a little bit and then bring down these highlights to even it out a little bit more. OK. All right, that's looking pretty good to me so far, looking a little bit more even. Now let's go back up to basics and I'm going to actually uh, bring up the, the vibrance and the saturation so we can bring the colors in. So let's blast this and see uh, what feels good here. So I'm going to put up the vibrance a bit. Vibrance is like selective on how it colors your image while saturation just brings up the color across the entire image. So I like to find a nice balance between the two. It seems a little bit more natural when you add vibrance and then add the saturation. So let's bring the saturation up. Yeah, that's looking pretty good so far here, as you can see. All right, dope. Now I wanna go and do the graduated filter, just like I did last time, but we're gonna apply it a little bit differently here. So that graduated filter, and next hit show selected mask overlay. Let's actually set, so just edit, so we're editing the sky first. All right, boom, click and drag. All right, looks good. Probably bring it up a little bit more so you don't get the water in the edit. So it's just the red part is in the sky. Uncheck select mask overlay. Okay, so I think there's a lot more detail and more color that can be brought out in the sky. So let's drop down the highlights a little bit more. 
Okay, actually bring down the exposure of the sky, I think, could be brought down. Yeah, that's looking nice. Let's see, the color of the sky, I feel like could be a little more blue. And actually, I want to bring out the purple in the sky. So let's bring the tint up just a little bit. Yeah, it's looking really good so far. And then, let's go ahead and bump up the saturation a little bit. Yeah. Dope. I didn't show you guys this on the last one, but if you want to see before and after, click this little button down here, this little slider. That'll show you what it's like before the graduated filter. This is what it's like afterwards. Big, big difference. Okay, I feel good with that. And actually, I'm gonna leave the bottom as is right now. What I wanna do to take it up a notch is what a lot of photographers like to call uh, dodge, dodge and burn. Um, so this is just a more basic way to do that, but it's where you lighten only specific sections in your image, almost with a paintbrush. You brighten up certain parts. So what I noticed with this image, in my preference, I wanna see these buildings more clearly. And also this area over here with the boathouse on the right. So I'm gonna click this button up here, this filter, it's called the adjustment brush. Boom. And similar to what we did last time, I'm gonna hit show selected mask overlay and then what we need to do here is actually set up this brush so we can paint in the, the, the light that we want. So on Feather, I keep that pretty high here. A flow, I wanna drop this down a little bit. I want it to be around 30. Density about 30 here. Now, I have a mouse and when I scroll with the mouse, it gets bigger and smaller, if you can see this, getting bigger and smaller. I wanna be about right here, just big enough to cover the buildings here. So now let's start to paint. All right, and you should see the red uh, filling in. So if you hold it down and you just drag, you start to see a red covering and that's where the filter is gonna be applied. I'm actually gonna bring up this flow a little bit for the sake of this tutorial to speed it up a little bit, but I like to be gentle because you wanna be subtle with these changes and just kind of paint in the red. Paint in your filter where you wanna see it. Probably need a little bit extra red. If, it's, if the red is darker, then that means it's gonna apply the filter more heavily. So here in this, this section with the trees, it's pretty dark. So I wanna paint that a little bit, a little bit higher and pump that up. And then here, let me drop it down a little bit. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit more gently. Yeah, so we can bring in the details of the boathouse. Okay. And actually, you know what? I actually wanna see the lights shining on the water a little bit more too. So let's paint in the light around the water. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, even right here too, that'd be nice. You can bump this up. Okay, so let's hit show, let's uncheck so, show selected mask overlay. And now it's pretty easy to just freak it. So bring up the exposure, you can see See, that's if I bring the exposure all the way up. That actually looks pretty cool, in my opinion, but I'm gonna bring it down a touch just so it's a little bit more subtle. And let's bring up the whites, which is gonna kind of make it shine a little bit more. And the highlights. Very nice. Very nice. I'm gonna bring up the clarity a little bit because I wanna see the details pop out a little bit more in here. Yeah. Okay, and as you can see, these are really subtle changes. These aren't like big, huge things, but I'm more into subtle uh, edits than like kind of crazy wild edits. So that's, that's why I you know, use this technique. So let's hit the before and after so we see what the actual changes look like. So if you uncheck this, turn off mask, this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looked like afterwards. Okay, and hit done. All right, and for me, that's pretty much a wrap. This is the before image, and this is the after. And it's 
night and day. So it's amazing what you can do with these drones. Even though it is a really small sensor, you have to push the images a little bit further than you would with your DSLR. But you know, it's amazing what they can do and you can really bring them back to life. I do wanna give a small plug. I launched a new company called Bay Brilliance at baybrilliance.com where people can basically go on and purchase drone images, aerial images of Oakland and San Francisco uh, and have them shipped directly to their door. So definitely check that out. Thank you so much for watching. My name is JJ Harris, AKA Tech Boogie. And please let me know in the comments what you think or if you have any questions about these techniques. I plan to release a video in the coming weeks on my workflow on actually capturing when using my drone and flying the drone. And I plan to give you guys a live step-by-step -step walkthrough on how I do that. But let me know in the comments what you think and if, if that's something you'd be interested in. Also, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I have new videos that come out. So thanks a lot, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. All right, peace.